Welcome back. Tonight on Animal Island, life-saving information for pet owners. Do you know what to do if your dog or cat gets badly hurt or gravely ill aside from calling the vet? Well, joining us now is Robin Elman, president and founder of In-Home Pet Services. She's going to be talking about and demonstrate pet first aid and CPR. Welcome. Appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk you. about this. Now, it, this is interesting because I didn't even realize this. I, I'm a pet owner. I have, I have two cats, one dog, and I didn't even realize the importance of CPR, but uh, in, in pet first aid, it's just something that you don't think about every day. Uh, we do have some interesting information about the uh, American Animal Hospital Association. Uh, according to the AAHA, one out of four pets, we have this on the screen for you, would have survived if only one pet first aid technique was applied prior to receiving emergency care. We're going to show you a couple of them, not just one. Statistics also show that preventable accidents are the leading cause of death in pre-senior dogs and cats. And, and, and this is, I didn't know this, dogs are three to four times more likely to choke than cats. That makes sense, I guess. And also three to four times more likely to be poisoned than cats because they don't chew their food. <laughs> and it's important to remember that any pet that is in pain or moved into pain can and will bite. That I did know. Um, so uh, so let, let's start off with some, uh, some basic techniques. I guess the first thing, you find your pet uh, injured uh, somehow, what's the first thing you need to do? Well, the first thing you have to remember is that pets will sometimes mask their injuries. Because we have to remember our dogs and cats are predators, you know, naturally in the wild. So they want to mask their injuries. So what you can do is something called a snout to tail assessment. Mm -hmm. And we move over the pet from snout to tail, trying to find an injury that maybe didn't initially present itself to you. Okay. So it also will create a baseline of health for your pet to kind of determine what's normal for your pet and what's not. And I see you brought a, a very yes. cooperative he's pet. he's very here. well trained. I trained him myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so so pets max. I always knew that about mm -hmm. my cat when she slams into the wall. <laughs> I knew she was in pain, even though she pretends she's not. So, we, so how do you do that? You just kind of like rub over the. Basically, the it should be basically a bonding experience for you and your pet. Mm -hmm. So you should do a little bit of this every day. You can look at their eyes, make sure they're clear, no discharge. Look at their ears, the same thing. Kind of feel over their body, make sure there's no lumps, bumps, or bruises. If your pet's sensitive about a certain area, mm -hmm. you want to practice every day. So a lot of pets don't like their feet touched. So maybe when they're on the couch, relaxing, touch their feet, let go, you know, pet them, give them a treat, right. until you're able to look at their toes, look in between their pads, see if there's any problems. Okay. And um, let, let, let's get to the CPR, but first, sure. uh, th there, there should be uh, an importance about a muzzling your, your pet. Definitely. Like you mentioned, yeah. which is very true, any pet can bite. So a pet owner should never say, oh, my pet won't bite me, because sometimes it's they an will. instinct. <laughs> yeah, you can touch a pet and they might turn around and snap at you. You know, it's nothing personal, just instinct. Right. So I brought something here very simple to show you that you can muzzle a pet very quickly mm -hmm. with anything you might have, shoelaces, pantyhose, uh, gauze. So I demonstrate this very quickly for you. Mm -hmm. And this is for pets with noses. 